Hi folks, in this month's episode we'll be turning our attention to the new Pulsar Quantum HD50S and we'll be seeing how it performs against the current Pulsar Quantum HD38S. Welcome to the Night Vision Show. In front of us here we have two almost identical looking thermal imaging devices from Pulsar. One is the current Pulsar Quantum HD38S and the other is the brand new HD50S. Side by side, very difficult to tell the difference um, from a physical point of view. The only telltale sign is if you have a look, you pick both of them up, if you have them side by side, you'll see that the lens on one is broader than the lens on the other one. Now the 50, HD50S, as the name suggests, it's a 50 millimeter lens, as opposed to a 30 millimeter lens in the HD38S, which has been on the market now for a while. The HD38S um, was a real game changer when it was introduced. Uh, it has a 640 by 480 screen resolution and a 384 by 288 um, resolution microbolometer, which is compared to many other many of its rivals more sensitive and more capable at longer distances. Um, the 38 already had um, a detection range of 950 meters which is practically twice that of, uh, of its competitors at a similar price. And Pulsar um, had to obviously come up with another um, evolution of the, of the quantum uh, to to give it that, that bit more of a of detection range. Now you can argue 1200 meters detection range at a man-sized object. Uh, you would think, well, that's quite a long distance. Am I going to know what it is? The answer would be the same with the with the 38. No, you probably wouldn't know what it is at that distance, but you'd be able to detect a man-sized object at that distance. It's only when you start to get into the ranges. Um, let's say four, three, four, five hundred yards, where you really start to notice the difference between the 50 and the 38. The 38 out to 150 yards, for example, there wouldn't be very much in it between that and the 50. You'd, you'd be able to positively identify a badger, a fox, a rabbit, a hare, a deer, you name it. Uh, you would be able to, you'd be able to, to see what it is with both. It's only when you start to get out to that three, four, five hundred yard mark that you then start to see the difference. Whereas you will start to guess what the animal will be with a 38, you will have a positive ID with the 50. Uh, and that was uh, it's very, been very evident in a recent testing that we've been doing of, of, um, of both these uh, quantum, uh, both these thermal imaging devices side by side. In terms of operation, in terms of uh, their capabilities, um, they're very much the same. Uh, we have uh, the same menu system uh, that's generic to the whole Pulsar range. Uh, it has uh, contrast and um, brightness controls which are the same and you have preset levels, three presets which make it easy for you depending on the environment that you're filming in, if be it in an urban environment or in a forest environment or uh, uh, you want to get um, uh, identification. They're just a set, a compromise or a set level between contrast and brightness. You can still you can still change these to suit um, to suit your surroundings. Um, you can also fine tune uh, the uh, the focus, um, both eyepiece and objective lens focus. The same on the on the HD thirty S, and you'll find that some of the other models, some other competitors are fixed, and you can't adjust those. Um, you also have the capability of recording from each device. So the 50S will also allow you to, to fit an NPR, which allows you to record everything that you've seen. Uh, you also have, have, a, have an external port for external battery pack, which we find very useful because when you add it to the side of the device, now I'm left-handed, but even I know the people who are not left-handed still find it quite handy because when you attach it, you also have a very handy 
um, handle for the actual device. So it's easy to hold, very easy to manipulate, but even without the battery, if you're using the normal double A's which fit in here as a cradle, if it takes four double A's, it's still very, very easy to hold, very manageable. Um, one of the other key benefits of the Pulsar Quantum series, and this has been carried over into the 50S, is the fact that it's got a very, very quick startup time. Uh, you've got about a 10 second delay for it to, to calibrate initially, so you don't have to wait 30 seconds as you do have to in some other um, rival products. The, going back to the, uh, the lens size, obviously with it being slightly larger, you will get that bit more definition, you'll get a bit more clarity, um, which is also one of the reasons why you are able to identify it to a greater range over the existing 30S. Um, and that is, that's also a very, very good plus point. And apart from that, we have, a, you also have calibration system, which is, which can either be manual, semi-auto, or completely automatic. But in most cases, you're going to pivot on automatic because it does it all itself and it makes it very easy. And you've also got a push button digital zoom. The last thing I would mention, that the, the only other difference I would actually point out is the fact that the HD50S has a 2.8 um, optical magnification as opposed to a 2.1 in the 38S. So basically those are the main differences, the magnification and, ten, and also sensitivity at a greater range. But certainly from what we've, from what we've seen, the HD50S is very much, is, is, is certainly worth the money. Tonight we're out in the countryside near Castle Douglas where we're based with the aim of doing a comparison test between these two thermal vision devices, the Pulsar Quantum 30 HD30S and the new Pulsar HD50S. Now in order to do that we first need to find some wildlife so we can do a proper comparison between the two. If we're lucky we might be able to find some deer, some there'll definitely be rabbits, hare and we'll try and see if we can film at different ranges so you can appreciate the differences between these two devices. Anyway, let's go and find some wildlife.
I hope you enjoyed our comparison test of these two thermal devices. Well, that's it for this month. Don't forget to tune in to our next episode of The Night Vision Show.